Hey, what's going on, guys and gals? Chef PV here. Um, Troy, Zero Ground FPV. Uh, all the stuff you find us on Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, wherever you want to find us. Today, we are doing a as quick as we can, or as quick as I ever can be, you know me, I talk, um, run through of the Avgant Glyph uh, headset that I've been using with my Connects Pro site. I chose the Avgant Glyphs for a couple of reasons. I did a poll in the Connects group, overwhelming, use the Glyphs. I talked to Bapu personally through p private messaging about them. Um, and I just was really sold on the technology and they had a great price on them. When I got the Connects and everything, I was able to get it all for a really good deal over the holidays. Had some holiday money, sold some stuff, and lo and behold, I have a Connects. And now I have an HD Rana that I have. And I've got another one I'm about to build today. So a lot of guys are getting the glyphs as well. I noticed a lot of people ordered them. So I just wanted to do kind of a, not an unboxing. I did an unboxing video and I just canned it. I want to do just kind of like a user kind of experience, things to look for and things to kind of do or at least just play with. Um, I'm not a professional at these things at all. I'm sure Bapu will watch this and go, wow, there's all kinds of stuff I could teach you. Um, maybe, I don't know. But there is some confusion and they are a little difficult to really wrap your head around sometimes um, as to what you have and what you should have or don't have. And so anyways, we'll talk about it. So with no further ado, I've got glyphs are here in the bag. Here's the box I just wanted to show you. Great box. Um, it had an interesting feel to it. The open exposed brown side with the obvious consumer, like that's like an electronic style sticker, computer type style, TV electronics. Um, just really, just felt interesting and cool. Um, inside the box was nice and clean too, the way the layout was. So um, everything is pretty much in this bag though that it comes with. So we're going to take a look at that. And again, we were using it with the Pro Sight Vision Pack. So we got that, the connects installed. And that's, here's the, the, the Rana we're building today that actually we're waiting on the new um, 1.4 millimeter lens, the new VTX and the new camera. Not new versions like another, and then the other ones over there. But um, <clears throat> here's your Avgots. They come with this soft bag, which works for me. I put them in a sky pack where they're actually fully protected. So you get them out. I just use them, so they're a little bit not in storage kind of mode. We'll do that in a second. Uh, let me put you down now on them. So there's the goggles or visor headset whatever you want to call it I have a bag here that has some of the parts I have this in there I'll tell you why comes with a little rag for the um, cleaning the optics so there you go so yeah they look just like a, a pair of headphones really I mean even the band is not much bigger if at all than a standard headphone the only thing that's uh, quite you know different in size sorry about that is going to be, you know, there's a clear difference right here. Now, notice my nose piece. I'm actually going to show you the way it comes when you get it. So when you get these in, and I don't know if you heard the t thud, but they are really heavy. Um, they feel legit for the price. Again, like I Sometimes you pay for a, a lot for a goggle, a certain brand or something. You know, there's one brand in particular out there everybody uses. And you really feel like the build quality isn't great. But with these, I felt out the box like they were good to go. So the way they come is with this shielded thing on there. Wrapped around. Wait, whoops. <laughs> there you go. It's got a magnet. So it's a little leather, and it's real leather. Uh, cover for the optics. Now you could in theory now put this on your head um, if you wanted you know but you'd have to lower adjust this really far and you could use them but they would look a little funny. I don't know that I would use them like that but you could. Um, that's you know what they're meant for. However just to get it out of the way the only way to use these as headphones is while they're powered off, essentially, which means you have not powered them on yet. You use the AV jack or the audio jack, plug in your, your phone, 
and then it actually will power on when it detects the signal. So the thing is, they have to be in powered off mode. If the visors or the, the optics are turned on, that is disabled. There's no pass through. Bapu supposedly is talking to them about that, but for now, that's just how it is. Uh, your HDMI plugs in right there. It comes with that cable. Uh, mine is on my ground station right here, but oh, there it is. So it's a, I don't know, five foot, six foot cable probably. It's plenty big for me for right now. These earpieces are nice and soft, but they're also, they feel like real leather. I don't know that they're real leather, but they do feel like good quality leather. Um, name, nice and cleanly. There you go. It just looks good. You have buttons, two on this side, one here, one here. Um, I forget. 3D and head track, so you don't even use that side. Over here, you've got volume up, volume down. Uh, brightness is the back one. Forward is... Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, what is forward? I forget. Uh, that's mute. Volume up, volume down brightness and I feel like this is something I need to uh, oh uh, that brings up a uh, vision test like the monitor the optic test so you can check the optics and get them realigned if you feel like they're out of uh, alignment and so that's what we're really going to talk about is it took me a couple of different ways of kind of tuning the optics to me um, and I still find that I have to adjust them even sometimes copter to copter depending I guess on the picture being transmitted so it's a little interesting. I'm still playing with it. Um, Bluetooth, by the way, it does have Bluetooth. This is another tricky situation that's going to hopefully not turn people off. You turn it on and then you hold up for five seconds. Well, there's Bluetooth. It's blinking blue. So Bluetooth is only used to upgrade the firmware. You can't stream anything Bluetooth, which is a little frustrating. I mean, I do understand, look, I get it. When the HDMI is plugged in, the audio is coming through the HDMI, so the problem is the Connects doesn't have a VTX mic yet, but they will soon. Um, and so that'll solve a lot of this because you won't want to stream music. But in the meantime, it's like, man, if I'm not hearing anything on HDMI, I'd love to be able to plug something in and overlay it or whatever. Um, who knows if we get there? Bapu said again that he's talking to them about that. But... Nice, good quality again. Everything feels good. Uh, so here we go. Opening up the optics. So when you get in here and open them up, they are actually retracted. They are not in their position. And the nose piece is just, uh, it's not even really that much of a nose piece, though you can use them this way. I'm thinking about trying them, in fact, again um, with this type of nose piece. But they also give you a bunch of nose pieces. They're in a little cardboard strip, which I just put them in a bag now. And I highly recommend trying multiple nose pieces. Try them on before you even put them in, in fact, and just really find the one that fits your nose, like the bridge of your nose, just in the most comfortable position. And that's probably going to be the one you're going to want to use. So you'll pull that nose piece out if you want. And it's got like a little piece of uh, plastic when you get them, like with an arrow. And it says to pull, and you pull it out, and then you can put the nose piece in. It just It's magnetic. It drops right in. And so now you have your nose piece for the bridge of your nose. This is actually going to adjust the height of the nose piece. It goes up and down. And again, it goes in the tuning of the optics and getting them in alignment with your eyes. What you're trying to do is these project the image onto your retina. You're not staring into them necessarily at a monitor in the background or anything. Um, it actually projects them. So when you have this on, and being that it's such a small band, people have the idea that there's light leakage. Um, there Obviously, there's light leakage, but not in the sense that you're used to. It's not that you're staring into something, trying to focus, and there's this light that's distracting you. You can actually physically see the perspective around the, the visor or the, the headset. It's hard to explain without you experiencing it. When you lock into the headset with your eyes, it projects onto your eyes and you get the full contrast and the brightness and everything in the picture. But you can look down or blink and it actually dims kind of or almost. Like it's like this weird, like it's a dim and it almost disappears. But it's still there. And as soon as you lock back on, you see it immediately, clear as day. Um, an amazing quality. But 
It's the weirdest thing, but it's awesome. Like I can sit here and have my visor on and I could type and I can see my fingers moving. I can see all the way to the camera. I can see the bottom of my monitor. I can see above, I can see like above my monitor. I just can't see the monitor right now. Which means that if my quad is 10 feet away and on the ground in front of me to the right, I can see it when I take off and then lock into the visor. It's, it's weird. It's weird, but it's awesome. It's going to take some getting used to for me. Um, anyways, just wanted to talk about that. I got a little ahead of myself. So the optics are not in place, actually. So the unlock is right there. Again, the, no the nose adjustment to get them dialed in. And then your di the the distance the di I don't know what it's called but the distance between your your pupils basically or your retinas, um, so you adjust all that and the way you do that is you, you again you cut them on and you don't even have to have uh, anything plugged in you hit this front button on the right side of your headset and it brings up the image and what you're gonna do is you're gonna line up everything so the crosshairs are the center of the of the picture you're gonna line those up. You're going to make sure that the other images are perfectly in the center of the circle and you're also going to um, uh, kind of focus them and make sure that the kind of like the brightness like it that it's as clear as it possibly could be and, and as centered as can be. This is where it got a little tricky for me. My the distance between my eyes was obviously equal so you have to you want to make sure that if you look at the if after you you're you're done you think you're done look at the the two optics and they should be equally distanced because you want to be looking at the center of the screen and what I found when I was first trying to do this is I must have set one just two or three off and then set the other one so like the distance was right but the edges of one of the optics was like blurry but the reason why was I was not centered on the entire picture I don't know if that makes sense and then you actually focus the image with by turning the optics themselves they spin about a hundred and something degrees, I don't know. Uh, and so you can first focus in the the center of the, the objects with your eyes, and then you actually focus the object by turning the center of the lenses. So I definitely recommend doing it first here. That gives you a clear center spot for your eyes. However, every copter I've flown is slightly different and I find that I have to adjust, not the nose piece, the nose piece stays in the same place, but I do have to sometimes adjust one notch or two out or in on some of the cameras, it seems. And I, I think that has to do with the image being transmitted and the size, or I don't know, but something about it makes me have to do that. Um, so that was interesting, at least just for me. I could be completely wrong, maybe I'm just doing something wrong. But that was the only thing for me. I don't change any of the focus, really. I haven't had to. Um, great, great experience so far. I'm very happy. Battery life is not too bad yet. I have had it die in a situation where I just wanted to get one more pack in. I think I could just plug in like my, my backup Mophie pack. Um, but I don't really want to do that. I don't want too many cables hanging. I already have to get in the habit of getting into it. But the really the coolest thing that I did was I actually made my ground station usable with analog video 3.3 and the 5.8 off this range video 5-inch um, monitor from Bapu's build list. I run the 5.8 off this and then I run it through a HDMI, uh, RCA to HDMI upscaler and then into the DVR and I can record it. I can then also send it straight through this the same way that we do the pro site through the splitter and do it on my glyphs. So I'm actually using my glyphs for analog now. In fact, I did some flights with them today. Um, was great. Worked fine. No latency on the con the up convert or anything. So that's my uh, user experience so far with the Avgot glyphs. Great job so far. Um, we'll see what else we can do. And I'll let you know some long-term uses, uh, kind of, you know, experience and all that. So far, very, very happy. Fly safe, fly smart. Just fly. Fly, I've got glyph, baby. Peace.